And one more video. This one's going to look um, also at speciation, but maybe in a little bit different way. I want to talk to you about the pace of speciation. So in this video, let's get out of the way here and let's look at an opening question. Imagine that we have a small flock of forest birds that gets blown off course during a hurricane. The flock ends up on a small, dry, and grassy island, and you locate this island 300,000 years later after this has occurred. What do you expect to see? Uh, do these current birds look the same or different as the original colonists? Do they have the same behaviors, and would you consider them the same species or different from the original? Well, we don't have a lot of information here, but let's make some assumptions. Do the current birds look the same or different from the original colonists? You're probably going to assume after 300,000 years being in a different environment that some of those birds' features were more important for survival than others. And perhaps a small portion of those birds had a variation that made them more successful than the other birds they were with. So that group probably went on to survive and reproduce at higher rates than some of the other birds they were with. And over time, we would expect to see differences that may result in a very different species. They may have different mating behaviors. They may have different features and characteristics that make them now separate from any other group. And once again, that's our definition of a species. This slide should look familiar. We saw it in the last video. Just want to remind you of where we get new species from. We get species from separation, either genetically or by time or by space, from one population into two. So here we have the original birds that were blown off course. Um, some of those birds, if you will, were the ones that are still on the mainland. And then this might be the new species of island birds that is related to the first one, but is different. So um, I want to just briefly address uh, kind of the two models of evolutionary change. How fast does speciation occur? Uh, can we produce new species in short bursts of time, long, over long periods of time? The two models that look at this, the, the older one, the one that Darwin advocated, is a model of gradualism, that new species form over long periods of time. So in this gradual model, looking at horse evolution, you see from 55 million years ago to today, if you were to go back and find the fossil record, all of these potential kinds of uh, fossils, it would reflect a gradual change. In this case, you, know, you see essentially a big one is size. There's also differences in hooves and differences in some anatomy, but it's easy to kind of put together all of these in a chain and show over 55 million years, we have seen the evolution of horses to modern day forms. This is gradualism, that changes occur over long periods of time, slowly and continually, to result in different forms. There's also a different model that uh, we use to look at the fossil record too, and it's called punctuated equilibrium. So what this says is there's periods of stasis, and that's that word may not be as familiar to you. Basically, there's periods where we really don't see anything happening. Stasis means stable. So there's periods of stability where nothing really is happening, followed by occasional bursts of speciation where there's big changes, big noticeable changes. So you see down here, if you look in this, you know, this is supposed to be our fossil record, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happened. And then in a short period of time, that short period of time may still be relatively long to us, thousands or millions of years, but big changes resulted. So rather than being the slow, continual, gradual branching or the gradual changes we saw in the horse evolution, here you may see no change followed by rapid change followed by no change. The, you may you know, find it interesting to Google this called the Cambrian explosion, which happened about 500 million years ago which led to a lot of very quick evolution, relatively speaking, and a lot of diversification in animals. So you may find that fun to look at or not. But let's, uh, let's begin to wrap up then by looking at this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go away for a second here. Uh, let's look at the two differences. Which one's right? 
is gradualism the way that we explain evolution or is punctuated equilibrium the way we explain it? Does the fossil record support one or the other? And the answer is it supports both. That we do see some species uh, that have resulted through slow continual changes over time like you see here in the course of you know the this uh, butterfly evolution we see this form slight differences in these forms more differences here more differences there so the evolution has occurred in two you know branches and given us gradual changes over time this axis down here morphological change so the wider we go in each direction that means the more change you have so this one gradually changed and gradually changed and i'm i'm running too much on here so that's one model but we also find for some species we have evidence of uh, punctuated equilibrium that is there's long periods long periods relatively speaking where we see no changes and that results I mean basically we see the modern form is very similar to the ancestral form the modern form is very similar and even here modern is very similar to this but notice it's a different uh, branching when I talk about the axis here I'm going you know, basically this is rapid change if it's a straight line it's gradual change it's gradual change if it's an angled line so there are some species that we do see in the fossil record where they seem to have been produced by these punctuated periods of change and there's some where it looks like it's gradual so which one is right both of them are depending upon the kind of fossil or the kind of species we're talking about let me show you one other way of thinking about this here's a sequence of numbers uh, one one two 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 three three four 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 five five okay uh, if I said, explain to me the, the change from one to five, you would say, well, you know, that's relatively gradual. There's, you know, ones and twos and threes. And, you know, it wasn't like there was one period of a big jump in the numbers. They seem to be pretty consistent. And they seem to have given us, you know, a sequence from one to five. If I said, here's a sequence. Okay, ones, a lot of twos, a lot of sixes, nine. If I said, tell me about the evolution from one to nine, you'd say, well, that's a little jumpier. Uh, I see differences there. Uh, that would indicate that for a long period of time, there was no change, and then there was a big change, and then no change, and a big change. So obviously, this model here represents gradualism. Gradualism, okay. And then this model down here, of course, represents punctuated equilibrium and I'll call it PE. So you, again, depending upon what sequence you're looking at, you may say, well, that one seems to reflect more of a gradual as a model. And this one here seems to reflect more of a, a PE model. If I give you this though, and said, what happened here? One, one, two, two, big blank, four, four, five. Is that gradualism or PE? That might be a little harder to tell. And actually, in real, in real biology speak, that's what the fossil record looks like. The fossil record is not going to be as beautiful and complete like we see here for every species we study. It might be gaps in it where there was not fossilization or the fossils were destroyed or we have a gap in our record. And so that one's a little harder to tell. So might this one be 11669? Maybe in between here, where's my... Okay, maybe in between here we had twos and threes and fours and fives and sixes, or maybe we don't have anything but ones all the way up here to six, and therefore it was a jumpier, punctuated equilibrium way of looking at it. So when when we talk about the fossil record, the fossil record is not going to be perfect, and because it's not perfect, we have to sometimes infer and fill in the gaps, and that's why we argue as scientists about is this gradualism or is this punctuated equilibrium for a particular group but in either event we know that this is how evolution works in different animals or different plants or different whatever that it may be a gradual model or may be a punctuated model but we know that change over time which is evolution occurs at different rates so it is important for this video to understand the difference between gradualism and punctuated equilibrium they represent two different rates 
of evolutionary change. Thank you very much. Now on to your homework.